And so we covered different, uh, you know, uh, matrices and derived from the markers to calculate uh, genomic relationships. Now uh, let's look at uh, some of the methods suggested in the literature to calculate genomic relationships. Uh, the first method, uh, I number them from one to five. Uh, there are more than five actually, but I am only covering five or six of them. Uh, this is called GOF matrix. It's derived from the observed allele frequencies. So we know what Z is. It's the incidence, incidence matrix for the marks we just talked about. And uh, the denominator in the formula scales the G to be similar to the A matrix. And P sub I are the observed minor, observed minor allele frequency of all the genotype individuals, regardless of inbreeding and selection. So this very simple formula, ZZ prime is weighted by the minor allele frequency of observed uh, genotypes. Another way of calculation of genomic relationships is GD matrix. This is variation of the previous matrix, basically. Um, the difference is, you know, weighing the ZZ prime matrix. So instead of using a different denominator, we are using uh, reciprocals of uh, markers expected variances. So D is a diagonal matrix. In the diagonal, we have elements of markers expected variance. So between one and two, the difference is weighting, you know, weighting the ZZ prime. Uh, and, and then G05, when uh, minor allele frequency in the base population is un unknown, then uh, 0.5 is used for all the values of the P sub I. And um, another one is GMF. Again, it's about the minor allele frequency in the base population. When, th when it is not known, uh, we use average minor allele frequency of genotype population to calculate the minor allele frequency. So it depends on what kind of minor allele frequency is used, you know, matrices are named G05, GMF. A regression method, um, <coughs> I call this matrix as Greg. Um, so MM prime is the uh, dependent variable and A matrix is the independent variable. Here ob the objective is to calculate the intercept and the slope. Um, so we want to actually get the solution for A using the markers as the dependent variable. So uh, the error actually includes the difference of true from expected fraction of DNA in common plus the measurement error to account for markers being a subset of the total DNA. So we want to solve for A and we substitute A with G because G is, uh, you know, analogs to A. And the normalized method, um, again, the ZZ prime is weighted by the trace of the, the ZZ prime. So did make, did this, you know, method, you know, make sure that, you know, the outcome is compatible with A especially when the inbreeding or the number of generations is low. Um, so in the formula, uh, N is the dimension of the matrix. And if the inbreeding is high, uh, MB can be substituted with one plus the inbreeding coefficient. So the diagonal elements can be less than one. So uh, we obtain different, you know, we, we use different methods to um, 
calculate the genomic relationships from the markers. There are some other methods. Uh, but one of the problems we run into when we obtain the genomic relationship matrix is the, getting the inverse. You know, it can be singular, especially if the number of loci is limited. You know, you have hundreds of markers, but thousands of individuals. Uh, sometimes, you know, two individuals have identical genotype across all the markers, and that can cause a problem. And sometimes the number of markers is smaller than the number of individuals, individuals genotype. And that can be a problem in taking the inverse of the gene. So to avoid potential problems, the gene matrix can be weighted as given in the formula. So here, GR is unweighted genomic relationship matrix. A is the uh, numerator relationship matrix among only genotyped animals. So it's, it is actually a subset of A. And then W is the weight. And this is a, 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 a constant, actually. And uh, Aguilar et al. suggested that you know any number you type between 0.95 and 0.98, um, you get very similar results. So it's not really critical if you choose a constant between 0 0.95 and 0 0.98. All right, I think that's enough theory here, right? Uh, let's uh, and go to R. I'm using R Studio for calculations. So first, uh, we need to install genetic pet uh, uh, package from Bioconductor. And then we need to uh, load the library, genetic pet library, uh, to the memory so we can use it. So in case we have some other uh, functions uh, or objects uh, in the workspace, we want to remove them uh, using that uh, rm command. Uh, of course, we need to uh, set the working directory. So first, I'm defining the path and then setting the working directory. So, um, you know, I can make sure that, you know, I'm the directory I'm supposed to be. Yes, that's, that's fine. So we are calling uh, the source functions, which is the genomic REL.R function. And that's the one actually we are going to use um, to generate genomic relationships. Now, this is uh, our marker table. This is a very small uh, data set. So we can click on the markers on the workspace and then to see the data. So the dimension of the marker, the, 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 the data is 100 by 1001. So it's really a small data set. And then we need the pedigree file. Okay. Pedigree file is just uh, in a sparse format. We have individual IDs uh, listed. Uh, they have their uh, Side and then now uh, those are the different five different different methods uh, we covered the theory to calculate genomic relationships and uh, GOF, GD, GO5, GMF, and then Greg method. Uh, I did not include normalized method. 
but I think that's enough to, you know, show how we calculate general relationships. So I'm going to through uh, with each method. As you can see on the right side in the workspace, uh, you can see those uh, uh, data frames are generated, matrices are generated. So regression method you know, takes a little bit longer. So if you click on one of those um, data frames, what you see is the row, column and row number for each, for each individual to identify individuals. And then we have uh, coefficients or elements in the matrix, in the genomic relationship matrix, which is G. But also we have the um, numerator relationship coefficients derived from the pedigree, which is A. So if the row equals to column, or column equals to row, which means that's the diagonal element, or the inbreeding coefficient. And if they are not, like, you know, column is 2, row is 1, then we have a, a relationship coefficient, which is the off-diagonal element. OK. Now we can, you know, use the data frame and, uh, you know, combine all those uh, matrices into one data frame. And then calculate co uh, correlations between them to see how they correlate with the A matrix. Okay, here are our correlations with A matrix. So this is the, you know, uh, the first column. If we look at those correlations with A matrix, um, you know, GOF and GREG, which is a regression, produce very similar results. Also GD produced very similar results. You know, they are high, those are high correlations. GMF produced, you know, the weakest correlation with the A matrix, which is 0 0.85, 875. And then you see correlations with others, with each other. So we can plot, uh, uh, like, GOF and A. Uh, that shows the, you know, uh, how strong those two uh, methods are correlated. This plot, of, of course, or correlations includes um, both diagonal inbreeding coefficients and off diagonal elements. And we can look at uh, distribution of the genomic relationship coefficients from GOF method based observed alert frequencies. Of course, of course, you know, we can take the uh, subset, the, the matrix or the data frame, core OPT, to look at the inbreeding and then the um, uh, relationship coefficients, or, which are the off diagonals. And then we can take look at the very maximum values, minimum values for each, and then the means. And then we can combine um, all those uh, values, uh, summary statistics, in one data frame and then visualize. And then mean i is the uh, average inbreeding, and mean r is the average coefficient. So if you look at the um, mean i, which is the average inbreeding, a and Greg are exactly the same. GMF produced very high inbreeding coefficient compared to our, uh, A matrix. Again, we can use uh, plots and histograms to look at the relationships. 
So here we have relationship between um, off diagonal elements of A and the genomic relationships uh, correct method, which is regression method. So, of course, you know, um, we need to obtain um, the inverse of those one of those G matrices to use in the GBLAB. Here I am using the REL uh, function uh, to calculate the G inverse. And that may take some time, although this is a very small data set, you know, but for actual data sets, it can take some time. So it's done. Again, you know, we can uh, view and then um, look at the dimensions. And then we can write the table, the inverse matrix for the genomic relationships in our working directory to use for genomic lab. Okay, let's go back to our slides. So if you look at the distribution of the genomic relationships derived from the markers, what you see, as shown in that histogram, they are no longer discrete. You see a continuous distribution between 0 and 1. And most, of, most individuals have uh, a coefficient of 0 0.5, which means they are uh, full SIPs. Uh, but even among the full SIPs, you know, it's not always 0 0.5. You know, some SIPs, you know, share more genomes from the parents than other SIPs. That's why, you know, SIPs not exactly alike, except, you know, twins. So this is the major difference from uh, additive genetic relationships derived from the pedigrees.